Hello everyone. In celebration of this month, I have decorated my garden with these beautiful uh, ghostly figures over here. Uh, but in all seriousness, I have actually done this to extend the season. But before we talk about that, today we are going to be planting some garlic. I have already done a video on planting garlic, so I'm not going to go into extensive details on how to do that. I will be linking that video for you guys in the description box below if you want to know more about it. And we are also going to be harvesting our sweet potatoes. And I was going to wait until we get our first frost to harvest the sweet potatoes, but it seems that it's going to take a bit of some time for the frost to come. We are right now in October 15th and I really need to get these things out of the ground. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to plant all of the sweet potatoes, that, the slips that I have purchased and I feel really sad about that but I suppose that made my job of digging up potatoes a little bit easier because I don't have as many potatoes to, to dig. And so th those are the two things that we are going to be doing today. So let's go ahead get the first task on the list done which is planting garlic and then we'll talk a little bit about what's happening over here. I chose this bed to plant the garlic in because that's one of the available beds that I have right now and I still have a lot of cleanup to do in this garden but I am doing it slowly whenever I have the time and uh, I usually only have time around the weekend that's the only time I have to work in the garden. So right now I am going to add some amendments into the bed because garlic is a bulb. Bulbs need a lot of amendments, uh, especially in the allium family. All I have with me right, right here is Hollytone. Any organic fertilizer would work. That's the only available thing that I have right now and that's why I'm using it. Otherwise I would have probably used wet tone. And then I will be re-amending the bed once in the spring and once in the summer before the garlic is ready to be harvested. So let's go ahead and get started. So I ordered two different types of seed garlic, but unfortunately I received only one of them so far. The first one I ordered and I received is the elephant garlic and I ordered this from Baker Creek or rareseeds.com. The second one I ordered, I ordered from Johnny Seeds and I'm not sure what's happening there. I don't know, they could be low on stock or something, but I need to contact them and see what's happening because they should have sent me the garlic uh, by the end of last month, by September, the end of September, beginning of October. We're right now October 15th and I still did not receive my garlic. And you're supposed to plant your garlic before the frost so that the garlic can start putting on some roots before the frost comes and it will continue to put roots in the ground as the uh, throughout the winter but uh, unfortunately I may have to plant the second set of garlic after we receive our first frost and it's unusual for us to have our first frost be this late I'm thankful for it because you know it's extending my planting season and, and I still see a lot of flowers everywhere, so that's that's beautiful. A lot of uh, annuals, and I'm happy with that. But for uh, yeah, anyways, but it's unusual for us. So right now I'm gonna be planting these, and these are not your typical garlic. They do grow really big bulbs, so I'm going to space them a lot farther than I would my uh, regular garlic. So you can see. This is just one clove, right there. This is my first time planting this, and I am super curious of, as how to it's going to come out, and I don't know if I've ever tried it, honestly. Like, the, did I, have I ever purchased elephant garlic? I know I've seen it at the store, and I wanted to purchase it, but I was thinking to myself, this, one clove of clove of garlic is equal to one head of garlic so uh, it's we'll see i'm really curious as to how this is going to turn out but i am a little bit nervous that i'm not going to be receiving my garlic so i may have to find another source for garlic before it's too late to plant it i mean you can plant garlic really anytime but the earlier you plant it the better it's going to be because it's going to grow its head bigger for you and um, it's going to be ready 
a lot earlier than if you were to plant it later in the season. So I'm going to space these about maybe six inches apart from each other. So this way, if I space them about six inches apart, about this much, the head of garlic will be able to grow into kind of this diameter from between this finger to that finger. And I'm giving it this much basically. Yeah, I think that should be good. That should be good. So I like to use my hand for measuring because it makes life a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and get these in the ground. So most of them are spaced about six inches apart. However, the ones that are super big, I tried spacing them about eight inches apart from each other. And in assumption that these will grow bigger because the smaller cloves of garlic are going to give you smaller heads while the bigger head, the cloves of garlic are going to be, give you bigger heads. And if you start with a bigger the clove of garlic, again, you're going to get a bigger head. So this is going to give me something massive. So I'm a little nervous about planting these a little, maybe these might be too close to each other. I don't know, but I'm going to go ahead and go with it and see, um, see what happens. Cause this is my first time planting elephant garlic. So as you can see, I was only able to plant one row of garlic and one right there, just one head right there or one clove, I should say. So I'm really hoping that the other garlic would come. And if it doesn't come, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the grocery store and buy some orga organic garlic and plant it. Usually you want to plant seed garlic because uh, the garlic that's in the store has inhibitors on it that stops it from sprouting but I have been successful in planting garlic from the store and you want to buy the organic garlic and not the non-organic garlic because usually that's that's treated you're more likely to get non-treated garlic that is organic and actually all my garlic that I've been growing has been garlic that started from so store-bought garlic unfortunately this year i'm not able to plant from my own garlic i usually save my garlic and plant some of it and save the rest to use in the winter this year however all my garlic started slightly rotting in the ground but i was able to salvage most of it and i peeled it all and i put it in the freezer and this is the reason why i'm not planting my own garlic and i also wanted to try new varieties but unfortunately now I don't have enough garlic for next season. So again, I'll 
if I'll contact uh, the company that I bought the garlic from, see what's happening, and if I am not able to get it from them, I'll just buy garlic from the store. So if you are not able to buy any garlic from a seed company, try the organic garlic. You might have uh, success with it as I did in the past. Also just uh, to keep in mind that seed garlic is typically a lot more expensive than the garlic that you would buy at the grocery store because it is specifically garlic that is grown for seed. It's also garlic that is monitored to make sure that they don't have any disease on them because garlic can carry a lot of diseases and this is why I actually like to rotate my garlic uh, and a lot of my root crops for this very specific reason because the disease can be present in the soil and you might not know it until the next season and then your garlic would end up, would end up all diseased. So I like to every year plant my garlic in a different bed and I have a whole lot of beds. I have I think 20 beds in here so I have the ability to do that. If you don't have the ability you can try growing garlic in containers. I have grown potatoes in containers, never garlic, but I also have seen people growing tulips in, in containers, so it is possible. Uh, you know, they're all in the same kind of category, <laughs> they're root crops, so you might be able to grow garlic in containers. I may try one of those years, see how it's going to come out, and let you, know, let you guys know. Maybe that would be a good experiment, and kind of have a bed of garlic and a container of garlic, and... Um, and see how it's going to turn out. So if any of you want to try it and you're kind of hesitant about it, I will try it out for you <laughs> since I have the space over here. This row over here and two thirds of a row starting from this side of the bed. So this side stopping right there is going to be the music variety. Now I'm going to lay out the next variety, which is going to be Let's see, the uh, German Extra Hardy, that's also a hard neck garlic. Do I have, okay, all right, so we're going to go with a German Extra Hardy and we're going to start lining up over here. So the German Hardy is about, yes. It is German hardy, German extra hardy. The German extra hardy is equal to about two rows. It starts from that row right there, from about right there, goes that way, then that way, and then this way. So it's almost two rows of the German extra hardy. The next one is going to be the Enchilium red. And this is a soft neck garlic. And these are all varieties that are new to me. Or I should say I never knew what I was planting because I always have been planting from the garlic that I grew myself. And that garlic I started from the grocery store garlic. So I'm gonna take this and see how many I got. And all the garlic is placed. And I got three and a half rows of the Italian, the Enchilium soft neck garlic. And notice the difference between the soft neck garlic and the hard neck garlic. The soft neck garlic's cloves are a lot smaller than the hard neck garlic cloves. Now, some of them are large, of course, like those two over here, but in comparison overall, the hard neck garlic's garlic has bigger bigger cloves and also soft neck garlic stores better than hard neck garlic so there are pros and cons and hard neck has a stronger flavor than the soft neck so we are going to plant this 12 by 3 bed i was hoping to plant more than this for garlic because we use a lot of garlic but uh, that's what i was able to purchase this year because seed garlic can be pretty expensive so I'm gonna plant these and I use sometimes a dowel and sometimes I just push them in and cover them I think the soil is soft enough where I, where I can do that now I'll use a dowel for the large ones <laughs> or a stick or something like that but the smaller ones the smaller ones though 
should be easy to push in and then cover just like that so i'll do that for the smaller ones and i'll use a, a stick or something like that to push the hard gar to create the hole and then push a hard neck garlic in the hole whoops all done it's all covered up and ready for winter and now it's going to be protected from the snow and the frost and all the things and also it's going to suppress the weeds we are still having some beautiful weather it's 54 degrees today and it is October I don't know 20th I think either 20th or 21st i'm not exactly sure i lost track of the days uh could be even we, we could be even deeper into october it could be october 22nd 23rd i don't know and over here in this bed i just covered it i will have to bring some fertilizer and put down some fertilizer i'll be i'll move this but just because i want to be able to take this uh, straw and put it away because um this way i'll clean up as I bring in the fertilizer that I need for over here. I just need about a, a little bit of fertilizer. I'll bring it, bring a small cup or whatever and sprinkle it over here. So the garlic is all planted and ready. I'm super happy that I got the garlic finally. They arrived a couple days after I mentioned that I wasn't, uh, I did not receive them. Right now I have some tomatoes that I want to harvest. I'm very pleased that I still have some tomatoes it's very few tomatoes and uh, then I'm going to talk to you uh, quickly about the frost covers over here so now let's talk about the frost covers you can see I have one two three four five six seven eight eight beds that are covered with frost covers which means that I have eight beds that I can still harvest even after the frost comes harvest from even after the harvest uh, even after the frost comes if I can talk right now so not all of them are not frost hardy some of them are frost hardy like cabbage but cabbage when the temperatures go down really low and when we do get hard frost it the hard frost takes it now some varieties are more hardy than others but I don't want to risk it just in case if some fluke night we end up getting hard frost before we get any light frost and over here on this side of me I have some celery that I still want to harvest and process and share from because I have tons of celery I have um, so I have two beds of cabbage I also weeded four beds in here and that was very satisfying I have a big pile of weeds when I first weeded them they were it was a very high pile I have some parsley now parsley is hardy but if it's small it's not going to be hardy enough sometimes I have some par parsley come back for me the next season and, but that's only if we had mild winters and also if it had some other plants around it protecting it this parsley over here is pretty wide open it has nothing protected it I weeded the bed it's pretty clear around it there's nothing at all protecting it and the parsley plants themselves are still small so they need some protection and this frost cover over here is going to allow me to be able to harvest some parsley because I haven't been able to, to harvest any of it I planted it late and I also had the water cut off over here for like about a month almost because I totally forgot to turn it back on and now I still have the water running but it's every four days so it's not a lot of water but we it is cold so the beds seem to uh, take a little bit longer to dry out and we sometimes get a lot of rain and sometimes get no rain at all like this week i don't think we got any rain it looks cl cloudy hopefully tonight we will get some rain so that a lot of these plants will get the rain that they need so 
In there I have some, in this bed right here, I have some broccoli and the broccoli, I planted them directly in the ground and because I didn't have any water going to them, also they, they stayed super small for a long time and I have the frost cover over them to protect them for the same reason that I am protecting the cabbage and hopefully I'll be able to harvest some broccoli. I should have really started my broccoli earlier inside and have it grow and produce and then plant it outside uh, but I didn't do that and I wasn't really thinking about it and I had so much going on anyways and the last bed over there is peppers and another bed of peppers over there on over there and this one over here is beans and the beans are gigantic and and we have lots of beans in there on them that I need to harvest and all I do to clip them is just use these clips right here. Now this bed I am using some tea posts, just regular tea posts because the beans were super high and the hoops that I'm using in these beds did not work out for the beans because the beans were high, were taller than the hoops. So I needed something that's taller than the beans because when you are protecting the plants from the frost, you don't want the cover that you are using to protect them from, from the frost to be touching them because that is going to cause the plants to get frost damage so you want to lift the cover off the plant and you can use things like hoops or as i'm using over here these tea posts that seem to work well now one problem that i have uh, seen with the tea posts is that if you pull on the frost cover and put some weight on it over where the tea post is it the tea post the metal on it is going to break the frost cover and create a tear in it uh, and that's a problem what you can do to protect the frost covers from tearing is put like uh, maybe a cup plastic cup or something like that to protect the frost covers from tearing if you use plastic you don't want the plastic to touch the plants the same thing as same as uh, thing applies to plastic as you w would with the uh, with a frost cover or with a sheet a, like a bed sheet whatever you use you don't want it to touch the plants and uh, you can use plastic uh, because you know greenhouses a lot of them are made of plastic just make sure to use a good plastic that is durable uh, weather durable and UV durable uh, plastic that is probably designed for greenhouses is going to work the best for you and again just make sure to raise it above the plants so that it's not touching the plants that's the only thing you want to be mindful of when you are protecting your plants from the frost now one thing that I really wish I had and I don't is something that can handle the snow load and I don't have that my hoops are not strong enough and I have seen uh, someone um, a YouTube video of someone using some uh, pipes and bending them into shape and it seemed like a an easy way to to he, he had an easy way of doing it and maybe I might try it in the next few years or I might just purchase the pipes the bent the pipes I don't know um, but those would be ideal for uh, creating kind of a plastic for creating a mini house a great greenhouse over your raised beds and you also want to make sure to use clips or something like that to keep the plastic or the frost covers in place and I just use paper clips and I also put rocks around the edges and the beds that I don't have rocks around the edges or something to keep the frost covers from blowing there some of them are getting blown in the wind and the plants are getting uncovered and that's a problem so I need to address that uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to address that so that those plants don't get damaged if we end up getting hard frost uh, because those plants are the cabbage that those are the beds that I'm having a problem with so let me quickly show you what I'm talking about so you can see right here there's some red cabbage over here and the frost cover is blown over and the purpose of the frost cover is to keep it safe and protected from frost but unfortunately the wind blew it over and this bed is a little bit odd and I did not have hoops that were big enough to keep 
this for us to cover in place. You can see there's one that's short over here, one that's tall on that side, and another short one over there. So it's uneven. Uh, I just need a rock over here to keep it in place. So right now I am going to go to the front and we are going to harvest the sweet potatoes that I planted in the front flower bed. I am a little bit nervous about those sweet potatoes. I'm not sure how they are going to be. So we're going to see together what kind of a result I'm going to end up with. I only amended, I amended them once and that's when I planted them. And I have no idea if they are going to be if they did well in that bed or not because that's a flower bed I don't treat it the same way I treat my vegetable beds I don't do the in-ground compost I I just used fertilizer and I topped them with mulch that's all I did so we're gonna see you're gonna discover with me if we're gonna end up with a good harvest or not let's before we do that I just want to show you quickly uh, give you a quick update over here on the bok choy uh, so ignore the weed over here that's a dandelion I need a tool to pull it out but these bok choys I uh, harvested them uh, about a few a couple weeks ago or so and they are coming back and what I did is kind of what you see over here but I cut it a little bit higher than that this these ones I cut a little bit too low so I cut it a little bit higher than that where you where there were two leaves coming out and you can see they are starting to produce again so look at that see that all of them are starting to produce again. So you don't have to pull your bok choy out of the soil to harvest it. Just cut it at the, at the base and you can harvest it that way. Some of them look like they are going to seed. So I'm going to actually harvest the seeds from them if they do produce, produce seeds. Look at this beautiful flower. And uh, I'm going to save some of those seeds because this is a good variety of bok choy. It's the baby bok choy and I really like that and these are also doing great they this is a different variety that's supposed to handle a lot more cold and snow also is that a bok choy I think so there's also here some daikon radish and that looks like there it is over there and that looks like it's doing great too before we go to the sweet potato harvest I also wanted to show you this this is a pot that I started with some sweet potato vines. I also had some geraniums in here and a blue salvia from the salvias that I planted around the uh, cottage garden and it's just starting to bloom and I don't have the heart to pull it out. So I have some sweet potatoes in here with it and the geraniums aren't blooming that much anymore but this blue salvia is blooming and I love it. I mean, look at these blooms. They're just so gorgeous and I love the color. I think it's so beautiful and I just wanna enjoy it until the frost comes and then I'll pull these sweet potato vines. I am going to try to plant this in the ground and see if this will come back. I don't think it's a perennial for us over here because I think this is perennial to zone six but I'm going to try it and see. It may come back, you never know, because, well, am I kidding? I think we're gonna be having a really harsh winter, but does it hurt to try to plant it in the ground? I don't think so. I think I should try to plant it. I should try to save it and see if it, if it might come back next year. I don't know. It's worth it. And this is the pot on this side. And this is one of the, is that the apple blossom? I don't know. I had a mix of different geraniums in these pots, but this is a beautiful one too. And I think these two colors, if I can bend the salvia, but you can see these two colors look very beautiful together. And the salvia looks so blue on the camera. It's not that blue, it's more on the purple side. <laughs> the camera's giving you a false color.
look at this one. <laughs> that is gigantic. These are the biggest sweet potatoes I've ever grown and I only amended the soil over here with just some organic fertilizer. I think though the year before that I did put some manure in here because I had a blueberry in here. That might have helped. I'm pretty sure it did in that position where, that, where I just dug this one. I thought this was a rock. Turns out this is a sweet potato. But unfortunately there is something that's been eating on these sweet potatoes. So I think I'm going to have to wash them and make sure there's nothing in them. I usually don't wash my sweet potatoes before storage, but it looks like I'm going to have to do that to get rid of those weevils, whatever they are, that are trying to eat my sweet potatoes. Look at the size of this one though. <laughs> it's crazy. So I got some pretty good decent one or ones over here look at these this one there are some really really big ones look at this one over here this one so I got a pretty good harvest so far I still have three plants that I'm trying to dig out and these are ones that have a lot more weevils in them that's why I didn't want to mix them with the rest and <laughs> These seem to be cleaner than these over here. So I still have two plants to harvest. I'm not going to do it right now because it is getting dark. I need to head inside. But I think I got a pretty good decent harvest. I mean, look at the size of my hand and the size of this potato. This is insane. I have never harvested sweet potatoes this big in my garden. It looks like they liked it over here. Also, I think one big factor is that I left them here a lot longer than I did I might leave my other sweet potatoes last year. Last year we had an earlier frost, so, uh, and I planted my sweet potatoes a lot later than I did with these sweet potatoes. I always do the mistake of ordering my sweet potatoes and having them arrive at the time of planting. I need to order them to arrive a few weeks before planting so that I can place them in the water and allow them to develop roots and then plant them. That's the best way to do it. I. Uh, so next year I need to remember to just do that. So when you get your sweet potato slips, you need to place them in the water so that they can develop roots. If you are growing your own sweet potato slips, it's easy to just take them out and place them in the water and have them develop roots. And then when it's time to plant, you're ready and you go ahead and plant them. But I have been ordering my sweet potato slips. Last time I did grow some slips, but I ended up not using them. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I guess I ordered some variety, a different variety and I wanted to plant it. But anyways, right now I'm going to go ahead and head inside. I'm done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, will be leaving a video for you right here, right here to watch. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.